Why can't I upload a backup image to the cloud? Hi everyone, Leo Notenboom here for AskLeo.com. If you're not subscribed to my weekly Confident Computing newsletter, head out to AskLeo.com slash newsletter after this video and sign up today. Weekly trips, tricks, answers, and answers like this one in your inbox. So here's the question I got. Why an external disk? Why not upload my image backups directly to Dropbox or OneDrive or similar? You know, honestly, it's not an unreasonable question. It really isn't. We push backups so hard and we push the cloud fairly hard as well as an appropriate way to store data, especially when we're talking about off-site information, stuff that is protected from things that might be happening at home. There are two problems with image backups that really make that unfeasible. Time and space. First, though, we have to understand just what a backup image is. Remember, it's an image of absolutely everything on the hard drive you're backing up. So it includes, if you're backing up your system drive, it includes Windows, it includes all of your applications, it includes all of your data, all of your settings, all of everything, which is one of the reasons we love image backups, because there's no thinking required. By backing up everything, you have everything, whether or not you realized you needed everything come later. And of course, it's a great way to simply replace everything should, for example, a hard disk die. The problem, of course, is the size of the image backup. Now, on my machine, the machine that I'm using right now, my image backup, a full image backup of just my system drive is 300 gigabytes on average. And yes, incrementals average about 10 gigabytes. So once a month, I've got 300 gigabytes, and then every day it's adding on another 10 or 15 gigabytes as an incremental backup. Now, I admit, I'm a unique case, right? I probably use various things on my machine a little bit more than the quote unquote average user. Okay, so let's have a look at a newly installed, a freshly installed copy of Windows 10 in this case. Um, a full image backup for that machine after installing it from scratch was 12 gigabytes. So that's the other extreme, right? That's a machine on which nothing has happened. There's no data, there's no installed applications, no nothing. So I'm gonna target, I'm gonna use 100 gigabytes, a target in the middle, as being a rough average of how big an image backup might be. Uh, of course, yours will be different. It'll be larger, it'll be smaller. But I think when we talk about the order of magnitude here, 100 gigabytes is pretty simple. And of course, it makes the math easier. So the first problem, time. Specifically, the time it's going to take to upload that image backup to whatever cloud service you're using. In this case, it doesn't matter which cloud service you're using. What matters here is the speed of your internet connection. And even worse, it depends on the speed of your internet connections upload, which is typically slower than download. Now, in my case, I have a fairly good internet connection. It's 800 megabits per second download and 40 megabits per second upload. Both of those are reasonably good numbers as internet connections go. So 40 megabits per second is what we would be using to upload whatever an image backup might be. First, though, we need to make sure we're comparing apples and oranges. If we take that 100 gigabyte image backup, well, we're talking about bytes. The size of the file is measured in bytes. The speed of our internet connection is measured in bits. There are eight bits to a byte. What that means is our 100 gigabyte file is actually 800 gigabits of information that are going to be transferred through my 40 megabit per second uh, internet connection. So quickly doing the math, that 800 gigabits of information up my 40 megabits per second connection means that it's going to take roughly five and a half hours to upload a 100 gigabyte file. That's a long time. And also that's the best case scenario. 
In reality, we don't get those kind of speeds. You could lop off 10 or 20% just on protocol overhead. But in reality, we're also doing other things. The machine is doing other things. Maybe you're surfing the web. Maybe you're watching a video. Maybe you're doing something else that is also impacting your internet speed. So that's a best case scenario. Let's look at a slightly more real world scenario. Like I said, my internet connection is relatively fast. I was recently helping someone who has what I would consider to be a significantly more typical internet connection. They had an upload speed of two megabits per second. I think their download speed was probably on the order of about 20, but the upload was two, okay? That means that 100 megabyte file would take on the order of 111 hours to upload. And once again, that's ideal conditions with them doing nothing else on their machine for that entire 111 hours. As I hope you can see by now, it quickly becomes impractical to upload these huge, huge files that are image backups. It simply takes too long. In fact, in a not even worst case, in a very common case, it can take so long to upload one that it's not even done by the time the next backup starts. In other words, you can never catch up. Now, the other problem, I mentioned that there were two, time being perhaps the most impactful one, but the other one is space. Consider we've got a 100 gigabyte file that you're uploading to your cloud storage. Do you have that kind of space? If you're using, for example, a OneDrive free account, you've got five gigabytes. You don't have anywhere nearly enough space. If you are using OneDrive with Microsoft Office, with uh, Microsoft 365, great, you've got a terabyte. You can hold exactly 10 copies, 10 different backups in that and nothing else. The issue here, of course, is very simple. That again, these files are so very, very large that they can end up chewing through your online cloud storage allocation very, very quickly. At a minimum, they'll take a fair amount of management to, to ensure that you don't run out of space accidentally. In reality, that doesn't happen. In reality, pragmatically, either because it takes too long to upload or because you just don't have that much storage space available to you in the cloud, uploading image backups just isn't pragmatic. Okay, what do we do instead? If we can't do that, what do we do instead? Now, that's actually fairly straightforward. One, do your image backups. Keep taking image backups, but put them on an external hard drive. If you're concerned about being always connected or some other kind of issues that might result, get two external hard drives and only have one connected at a time. Put the other one in a safe place. I used to do this with my wife's business. I would occasionally swap the drives. So I would have an external hard drive at home that I was backing up to and an external hard drive stored at our store that was off-site should anything happen to home. You don't have to go quite that far if you don't want to because there's a better approach, honestly, for keeping things off-site. And that is realizing that you don't need to keep everything off-site. If there's a disaster, for example, that burns down my entire house and everything in it, honestly, the recent copy of Windows on this specific machine, I really don't care about. What I care about is my data. What I care about is the stuff that I can't replicate. I can get a new machine. I can reinstall Windows. I can reinstall my apps. I can reconfigure them. I can't recreate the data that may have been lost. So keep your data in the cloud. It's significantly smaller, uploads significantly faster, and is significantly more useful. How do you do that? That part is very, very easy. Use OneDrive or Dropbox or Google Drive or any of a number of equivalent services where as long as you do your work in a folder that's managed by that utility, it's automatically uploaded to the cloud. And that's what I do. If I'm working on a document, as soon as I hit save, boom, it gets uploaded to OneDrive. 
I don't even have to think about it because I'm doing all of my work in my OneDrive folder. Similarly, my photographs, my precious photographs that there's no way you could recreate should they ever be lost, they're in Dropbox. When I take a photograph with my camera, I eventually, very quickly, copy it to a folder on my machine, and then it's immediately replicated to the cloud and to my other machines. On my phone, when I take a picture, all that happens automatically. When I take a picture, it automatically gets uploaded to Dropbox without my even having to think about it. I'm not having to upload my entire image. Like I said, that's not practical. But what is practical is to keep your images on your external hard drives and then also upload the data you care about to the cloud automatically. Hope that helps clarify why and what you should do instead. For updates, for comments, for links related to this topic and more, visit askleo.com 158779. I'm Leo Notenboom. This is askleo.com. Thanks for watching.